In this video, we're going to look at some code that's typical of the way a beginning programmer might write something. And you'll see that while it works, it's not a very good way to code. Now, the solution not only requires fewer lines of code and it's more flexible, but it's also a method that you'll use over and over in the future. Now, this project is called Billions of Stars, and it shows how you can put multiple objects on the screen at one time without using multiple chunks of almost the same code. Now, we're going to be using uh, several files here, build.settings, build config.lua, main.lua, and then three uh, star pictures, glow star, gray star, and yellow star. And at the end of this video, I'll, I'll put up a, a link showing where I got these graphics and more really good graphic package that you can get. So uh, main.lua, this is the first version of the code, and this is typical of how a, a beginning Corona SDK programmer might write it. Um, at the beginning here, we have... Uh, display set status bar basically we're hiding the status bar at the top of the screen and then we're setting up a couple of variables uh, W is the content width and H is the content height that's so that later on we can use W and H um, and you'll see where we use that so here we go with the uh, first star actually first of all let me go ahead and run this and um, show you I'm gonna launch the simulator here and okay, so what this program does is it puts four stars at random on the screen. And when you click it, over here you can see in the terminal, it shows the name of that star. Okay, and it, do, it does randomize them. So here, let me relaunch the simulator. They're, they're in a different spot. They're in a different spot, but they still, when you click on them, show their names. Okay, so that's what this code is going to be doing. So here in the first, uh, the first star, we've got a function called star one tap. And it's passing in the uh, the touch event, and we're just printing star one. That's what you saw down here uh, in the terminal window. So this local function here uh, is ready to be used, and it's being used by this chunk of code right in here. So we're doing local star one equals display new image, and then the name of one of those ping files, the star files. After we create the star one object, we're going to set the x and the y using uh, math.random. And math.random is cool because you can pass it a minimum and a maximum. So here we want the minimum x value to be 20 and the maximum x value to be the width, which we set up earlier, minus 20. So that way it doesn't just show up clear at the, uh, the far edges of the screen. Uh, and star y, we set the y, or the, uh, the vertical coordinate, to the same thing, except this time it's uh, between 20 and h minus 20. And then because the, the stars are kind of big, I go ahead and scale them down. You don't necessarily have to do that, though. Uh, and then I give it a name. Star1.name is star1. And then uh, I add the event listener. It's a tap. We're looking for a tap event. And it will go to star1tap, which is this function right up here. Okay, so that does the first star. And we just duplicate that for the second star. This function is called star2tap, and it prints star2. And then we create the star2 uh, uh, object here and set up all the parameters. And we do that for the third star and the fourth star. And I have seen tons of code like this. And this is how typically beginner type programmers code this kind of thing. Uh, and as you, as you saw, it does work. Let me launch it again. There we go. So it does work. And if you click a, click a star, it actually prints it out there. But the problem comes in when we want to scale that up. Let's say we want 10 stars instead of 4. Now you can copy this chunk of code here for the fourth star and uh, paste it in and change it to say star 5 and then do it again for star 6 and so on. But there's a better way to handle the whole situation. So let's start that um, by deleting everything after the uh, first star. All right, and we're going to add another uh, another couple variables up here. First, we're going to set up a variable called rand, and it's going to equal math.random. So it's actually going to equal that uh, math, math library. And then we're going to do local max stars. This is how many stars we want. So let's set that to four right now. Um, the next thing we're going to do is set up a table that holds the uh, the different stars that we're going to be using. So we have a, we have gray star because we want a random we want uh, different kinds of stars in here. 
Okay, so we have uh, gray star, there's glow star, and there's yellow star. So now I've got a table holding the names of those files. And we're going to change this function here. All we're going to do is change it from star one tap to star tap. And down here, instead of printing star one, we're going to say, uh, we're going to ask it to print the name of the object that was tapped. Okay, so we can get that. Okay, E is the event that's passed in, and whenever an event is passed in, it has different parameters available to it, and one of these is uh, target. Uh, and so target.name. All right, and we'll come back to this uh, in a moment. And now down here, we're going to turn this code here into a function called make a star, and we're going to pass in an ID. Let me move this stuff over here. And here inside this function, we're going to do things a little bit different. First, we're going to create a, a function called a star index. And this is an index into the stars table that'll tell us which image we're going to be using. So local star index equals, uh, and then a random number between one and three, because we have we have uh, three star pictures we can choose from. But what if we have five star pictures or 10 star pictures? Well, a better way to do that other than uh, hard coding this value of three is to actually look for the number of stars, number of values in this table. And that's very easy to do. You do the pound sign and then stars. And what that says is give me the number of elements uh, in this table. Very cool. All right, now we're going to do uh, local rand x so this value is a random value of the same one we were using before basically starting at 20 and width minus 20 local rand y equals random 20 h minus 20 And just for the fun of it, we're going to, uh, you know, I made the star smaller. We're going to go ahead and randomize that so we can get different size stars. So star size is going to equal random value of 25 and 75. And then we're going to divide that by 100. Now, the reason we need to do that is because scale uh, for a display object uses a number that's between 0 and 1. But uh, random, people are yelling at me, you forgot the N. Okay, uh, but random will return only integers when you're doing uh, something like this, when you have a minimum and a maximum. It would be nice if we could do, say, from uh, 0.25, so, so, so from a quarter of the size to three quarters of the size, but you can't do that. Um, rand returns an integer. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we just say between 25 and 75, divide that by 100, that gives us 0.25 to 0.75. Perfect. All right, and now um, local star 1 equals display new image gray star. We're going to change this because we want to get a random image. So we want to get it out of the star table, star, star index, which is, there we go. Okay, so this is going to say um, star index, which we set to a random number between one and the number of stars, and it's going to pull that value out of the table and do new image on it. All right, we're also going to change this. It's not going to be called star one. It's just going to be star. Uh, so star, let's see, this is going to be rand x. Rand y. And this is going to be uh, star size. And yes, we could have um, we could have just taken this, for example, and put it in here. But in a lot of cases, what I'm doing, making kind of a generic function, uh, I kind of like to get things um, kind of compartmentalized so you get, get all your stuff ready up here and then use it down at the bottom but that's just kind of a stylistic uh, choice there 
All right, so we've got the scale set. We've got the name. We need to change that, so it's going to be star, and then whatever the ID is that we pass in. And if I'm going to pass in a number, which I'm going to, then I want to do two string ID. Okay, so this is going to take. Uh, it's going to set no name to star plus. Uh, it's going to concatenate um, the ID that we pass in up here. All right, and we're just about done. Let's see. We need to change this, and we need to change this, and the make a star function is done. Now we need to call that, and we can do that. Um, we can do it like this: make a star, and then pass in an ID. Uh, let's see which ID is um, 1962. All right, and if we save this and run this we get a bug all right let's see what did i uh not do oh okay uh i'm attempting to index okay this is stars yeah 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 okay and i know people were yelling at me you misspelled it uh okay so let's try this again all right there we go we have one star and if you click it it says it's star 1962 do it again. We get a different star because it's random. So it's going to be star 1962 though. Different star. Different star. Different star. And it's different sizes. Okay. So that's cool. So it works. Uh, let's go ahead and um, change this into a, um, uh, a loop here. Let's add more. So I'm going to uh, cheat here and just paste that in like that. Alright. So I'm going to so here we go. Make a star v. All right. So for v equals one to ten, but what we're going to do is we're going to do max stars. Okay. So for v equals one to max stars, do make a star, and it'll pass in v. So the first time it goes in, it'll be one, then two, then three, then four. And so let's go ahead and try this. And we get four stars, different sizes, a um, couple different types of stars there. And if we click it, star four, star two, star one, star three, awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and change uh, max stars up here to ten. So this is so basically what we have is is now we have the same thing we had before, but we've got much less code. It fits all in this one uh, little screen right here. And if we want to change four stars to 10 stars. We just change that variable right there, run it again, and we've got 10 stars, and they all know their names. And if we wanted to have, I, I haven't even tried this yet, but let's just try 100 stars. Woohoo! Okay, that's awesome. All right. So we have code that's easier to read, and it'll work with four stars or 40 stars or 100 stars without needing to add any code. We just set max stars to the number that we want, and the code that's already there takes care of the rest. Now, just for the fun of it, let's add a little bit more to this code so it's actually more usable. For one thing, the stars are created, and they're just kind of set in motion. And while we could step through all the objects and look for the ones that are stars if we want to mess with them later, there's a better way to handle that, and I'll show you in the second video.